Hi folks, we're back and we're cutting through the matrix. If, if people can understand that a long time ago, when they, they brought up Fabian Socialism, George Bernard Shaw, uh, who was a really nasty character and a front man, as they all are, they're built up to be wealthy and famous and even have other writers writing their stuff for them. But anyway, they make them famous, that's the way they do things right to the present day. And um, he was really a top socialist and, and, a, and a founding member of the Fabian Society. And at that time, uh, they thought that they could train the people to be anything they wanted to. And if a child is born, you take it from its mother at birth so, so that uh, uh, it'll never have any contact with its, its real mother. And they'll grow up communally. That was the idea. The state would bring up the children and uh, get the right in, uh, uh, ideals indoctrinated into them very early on. They tried that too in some... That's what the hippie movement was about too, by the way, with their, with their relationship to Israel, because Israel came up with the first kibbutzes, uh, and it was the same idea initially in the kibbutz. The mother was supposed to um, have her child removed at birth, and commonly they'd all bring them up each other's child, children. And that was the idea, because many of them had left the Soviet Union and been given permission to, by the way, uh, the only ones we could get out into our country, uh, because they, they said that the Soviet Union was not Marxist enough. And there was an excellent book put out, it was called Children of the Dream, where they, they get glowing reports of, of course a lot of lies too, but glowing reports of how everyone was so happy and not knowing who their children were and, and all sharing the work together and different uh, women would, uh, and men would take turns looking after all the children in the community. And of course, but what really happened is that the mother's instincts were so strong, eventually it died out over time because they wanted to take care of their own children. It's a natural thing. But that really, oh, it really gets them, really gets the grit going between their joints. All, all these socialists, when they, when something fails like that, they won't accept it as a fact. So they keep trying it over and over again. And as I said too, look at all the movies that are out today with women generally dressed in leather outfits, uh, that go around giving cratty chops to guys weighing 500 pounds. Uh, and this is all the creation of the female warrior myth that Lenin was talking about too, as they try and change all gender roles and even deny there's such a thing as gender, by the way. And of course, we know that Sweden, which is really communist and, and, and all but its, its, its name, they could call it socialist. They, they, they are really communist. True communism was to come 500 years down the road after the, clen- the many, many cleansings to get the inferior types out to get the right stock that would bring in the utopia. And as I say, the Soviet Union was actually the Soviet uh, Socialist Union. And Sweden is very similar. And plus, Sweden has the, the Nazi background on eugenics because, and I'll put that link up, I can find it again, where you can see their experimental experiments in eugenics to keep the blonde, pure race going forever and ever. And again, trained by the, the, the government system. So they're always a first in something. And so they're the first ones to out, outlaw, basically, gender. It says, no him or her preschool uh, uh, fights gender bias, it says. Stock comment, the, the Egalia school, I guess of an egalitarian preschool, staff avoid using words like him or her and address the 33 children as friends rather than girls and boys. From the color and placement of toys to the choice of books, every detail has been carefully planned to make sure the children don't fall into gender stereotypes. Society expect girls to be girly, nice and pretty, and boys to be manly, rough, and outgoing, says Jenny Johnson, a 31-year-old teacher. Agalia gives them a fantastic opportunity to be whoever they want to be. <laughs> With all their indoctrination, they're going to be who they want to be, right? The taxpayer-funded preschool, which opened last year in the liberal Soderman district of Stockholm for children aged 1 to 6, is amongst the most radical examples of Sweden's efforts to engineer equality between the sexes from childhood onwards. How, how is that engineering equality? M- m- most women, I mean, most universities have 60-odd percent of women going through them now, or more. Breaking down gender roles is a core mission in the national curriculum for preschools, underpinned by the theory that even in a highly egalitarian-minded Sweden, society gives boys an unfair edge. And what? To even things that many preschools have hired gender pedagogues, sounds rather dirty, to help staff identify language and behavior that risk reinforcing stereotypes. Can you believe this? 
Some parents worry that things have gone too far. No kidding, they're a bit slow and worrying. Eh? An obsession with obliterating gender roles, they say, can make the children confused and ill-prepared to face the world outside kindergarten. Different gender roles aren't problematic as long as they're equally valued, said Tanja Bergsvit, uh, a 37-year-old blogger and a leading voice against what she calls gender madness in Sweden. Those bent on shattering gender roles say there's a hierarchy where everything that boys do is given higher value, but I wonder who decides that it has, it has higher value, she says. Why is there higher value in playing with cars? Hmm? At a, why is there higher, higher value in going shopping? At Agalia, the tiny connotes equality. The title connotes equality. Boys and girls play together with a toy kitchen with plastic utensils and pretending to cook. I guess that's what, how they'll end up when they're older. No one will want to cook. They'll all pretend they're cooking so they don't give away their gender. One boy hides inside the toy stove, his head popping out through a hole. Oh, that's awful nice, isn't it? And so anyway, this is your, your typical thing. That's, it's not just in, in Sweden that's going on. You'll find that it's going through all your schools. And I'll put up that John Taylor Gatto audio again tonight to show you how they were introducing this many years ago subtly and gradually accelerating up to the present time. And it doesn't matter how many times they've had disasters with this. They've really screwed up the people's minds. Once they become adults, they're in an awful mess, a lot of these people. An awful, awful mess. But it doesn't matter, it's like a religion, and they'll keep pounding square pegs into round holes, believe me. And that's truly is Marxist ideology. It's absolutely incredibly disgusting. And, and then when you look at the things too, I've mentioned too how the, the value of the family unit, that had to be destroyed, of course. So you destroy a family, you've got to destroy male and female, obviously. And, um, and that's part of the Communist Manifesto. It's, it's pretty well over by now. And to go all the way to, 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 to bring you down into the dregs of, of necrophilia, as the Frankfurt School said they'd bring society down to. And I talked before about how they, they plasticized bodies, they put them on display, and all the cool people, the ones who don't want to show that they're upset or anything, the cool people have to look at them. Oh, it's very interesting. It's a work of art and all that rubbish. And... It says, fashion meets death that bodies show. This is after Lady Gaga did her publicity stunt with it too. She'd do anything, and I mean anything, uh, for, for cash and fame. But uh, this is a fashion show and it's taken over. Fashion merged with death at the catwalk show in Berlin, in which sultry models uh, strutted, it's not very sexist, like, well, it might be male too, alongside preserved animal and human corpses. Although, although mind you now, the trend it said in fashion is, is for the transsexual type, the male uh, who can be both women and males on, on different runways and get paid. That, that's, that's what they're pushing now. It's no accident this is all happening. So alongside preserved animal and human corpses, controversial an, uh, anatomist and plastinator, this is this madman, Gunther von Hagens, is showing some of his most famous works in the body world's A Matter of the Heart exhibition at the, the post banoff uh, until August. The exhibition featuring an inside look at more than 200 human specimens, including full bodies, organs and body slices, that's in case you get an appetite, proved a unique backdrop to the dark-themed fashion show of Armenian designer uh, Edward uh, Hohanesjan, uh, and so on and so on. And you can look at some of the pictures on this link I'll put up at cuttingthroughimage.com. If, if that's your thing, if you've been perverted enough by all the videos you've been watching, you might enjoy it. And um, it's quite something how it's all going according to plan as we become dehumanized, we go through airports and everything's, everything's, everything's groped today. I mean, they do. They're told to grab your genitals now and feel them for God's sake. And you allow them. I would not take another flight. Nobody should take another flight and let them learn. You're not going along with it. But you can count on the goody two shoes. Oh, I got to go my holiday. I got to go and see so and so. Getting freedom is going to be difficult. You've got to be prepared for that. Everyone's so used to popping a pill for a headache, instant relief. No pain. Egocentonic, as, as Russell said, Bertrand Russell, will create an egocentonic, egocentric society, narcissistic, who will avoid pain and seek pleasure. And that's what the big boys know. No one will put themselves out by not taking a plane or not doing something. 
and hurting the guys in the wallet, which is one thing they do understand. Hi folks, I'm back and we're cutting through the matrix. And just before I go on to this globalist uh, article I've got here, from, from France, a, this is what they're doing in France to do with the, the gender blurring. As of next September, the new official French science curriculum will require, require all grade, grade 11 students preparing the baccalaureate, a majority of French teenagers, to study a, mem- a number of themes more closely related to gender ideology and aggressive sex education than to nature studies. The two main headings, feminine and masculine, and taking charge of your sexual life together and responsibly, make about a third of the yearly curriculum, one third of it, for non-science students. They're also included in a wider program for science candidates. The program uh, promotes contraception, ab- abortion, defense, homosexuality, and so on. This also minimizes differences between men and women. This is what they say. This is your standard uh, communist uh, Pavlovian answer. Anatomic and physiological differences caused by the influence of sexual hormones between the masculine and the feminine brain are no more important than differences between individuals of the same sex, is one of the concepts that 11th graders will be expected to have understood by the time they pass public examinations. The spirit of the curriculum is abundantly reflected in new textbooks which will be financed by public spending and distributed to pupils in all public, but also in all publicly funded private schools, mostly Catholic, when the new school year begins. So it's mandatory across the board, regardless if you're private or public. So this is your standard stuff, is they try to blur it all and say, you know, hormones have nothing to do with anything, and it's just the way that you're trained from youth to, 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 to dress this way or be that way, and so on and so on. The same rubbish they've been prattling on about for a hundred odd years. And everywhere they've tried it before, it falls apart because people tend to want, at least most people want to tend to be what they actually are. And there's nothing wrong with being what you are. never was. It's called nature. How can it be wrong? eh? Now, globalism too, the environmentally friendly threat to freedom. I'll put this this link up too at cuttingthroughmedias.com at the end. And it's... um, it's an interesting article about uh, the New World Order, the United Nations, and what it's really up to. Again, the agenda of globalism has got it all down, Agenda 21, the different conferences they have on environment, sustainability, which is all really to depopulate the world down to their manageable level. For, for the bureaucrats, they manage nothing to do with overpopulation. In fact, I've also got a RAND uh, investigation, the big company that does all government's investigations, massive computer organization too, the st- statistics, etc. And they say that even with the massive flooding of immigration into the Western countries, they will not be able to keep up the population numbers because they're dropping like a stone to pay off the national debts. So where's overpopulation? It isn't happening in the, in the development country. They've dropped below sustainable levels already. I'll maybe talk about that tomorrow and put that one up. We're lied to on every level because there are political agendas at work and socialist movements at work working with the big bankers to bring in a new type of utopia of, of a, a much, much smaller population. And that's what we're living through today as we go through the bashing, the head bashing, I'm talking the brain bashing, to make us all the obedient kind of mixed up, confused, genderless society uh, that they want, this androgynous system that they're trying to bring in, as they also dehumanize us. And we're, we're learning to be awfully well dehumanized by getting, allowing ourselves to be grabbed and felt and x-rayed and all the rest of it by all and sundry. And eventually you'll have to get into, go into a mall. It'll be the same thing eventually. And you'll adapt to that too. Why? Because you are the stupid kind of creature they want you to be. Get some, you know what, if you do have any good hormones and say no. So about time you all started to say no.